Greetings, indeed, salutations, memberinos. Welcome to your exclusive kind of, kind of nearly monthly inventor tip or trick or tutorial video uh, for members only. Is is my thanks to you for your delectation and delight. I present a tip on all the all the different options for projected geometry. This came out of a comment that I saw in one of the, the more recent videos that I did, someone asking, have I ever done a video on project geometry before? And I was like, I don't think I have, but it'll make a great members only video. So here it is, mate. But before I get cracking with this, genuinely thank you to all you guys for being members of the channel. The support really is keeping this going. So thank you for that. So with that being said, here's your project geometry video. If you know all this and it's all bread and butter to you, mate, you might still pick something up. If not, hey, thanks still all the same for being a supporter of TFI. Right, lad, the question was asked. It was, what are all the options for project geometry? Because back in the day, back in the olden days, you only had one or two different project geometry options, but now we've got like four or five of them. Uh, and it's not all that obvious what they all do. So I thought I'd do a video covering what they all are. So let's start a sketch, mate, and let's drop it down on, uh, let's go on XZ. So XZ slices through the middle of this part, this is just a free form solid, uh, but it slices through the middle of it. Uh, and then I'm sure you I'm sure you know me. If you press F7 on the keyboard, it does a slice graphics and it'll cut away the material that you don't need to see. And it makes things easier to visualize. So that's F7 for slice. You can also right click in slice graphics, but there's the shortcut there. F7 for the ballers that prefer keyboard shortcuts. Right, project geometry. It's on the create panel and it's this button here. You've got project geometry, project cut edges, project flat pattern, project 3D sketch, and project DWG geometry. I'm going to cover what the all are as quick as I can. So starting with project geometry. So this is project, not project. So project is like I'm starting a project to build a house. I'm starting a project to uh, create a football team. So it's not that. It's not a project. It's project. So you're going to project your voice. You're going to project a stone towards somebody's car it's it's throwing something it's the it's the art of, uh, of 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 moving something or imposing something onto something else that's what project means so project geometry means to take some geometry and then project it onto something else in the context of what we're doing we're projecting geometry onto our sketch and the the reason you do that is you may need to dimension to it, from it, uh, use it for a, an extrusion. There's a, oh, I can't possibly give all of the reasons when you'd use it, but there's a lot of them. So project geometry allows you to pick like an edge or a face in the background. So say for example, if we pick this face here, which is kind of this face here, it'll project all of the edges around that face and then kind of burn them onto the sketch and you end up with that. And this projected geometry is called reference edges. So if you right click and OK, you can't you can't drag it, you can't move it, you can't dimension it. You, you get a driven dimension if you do, but there's nothing you can do with it. It's projected from this edge. There's an adaptive link from that edge to this line here. But now you've got this edge here. You can create an extrusion using this loop, um, or you can dimension new sketch objects from that loop. So yeah, that's that's what project geometry is. Uh, there's the, the the most common uh, the most common use of project geometry that you'll come across is when you start a new sketch. You get this little dot at the middle. That's a project geometry which happens automatically. Of if you go to the origin folder of the center point inventor, or as long as you've got the application option enabled, which it is by default, inventor projects the center point of the entire model onto the center of the sketch. And that's the most common one. But um, yeah, if you do, for example, just a regular old extrusion, uh, extrude that up and then sketch on a face, you can do project geometry and then you can pick like a face like that. And then you can you project the edges. You, I like to say, I like the way I like to define it is you're burning the edges of that face onto the current sketch that you're working with. And then you can, you know, you might want to drill a hole here so you can dimension the center of that hole away from that edge. And because that edge is burned onto your sketch, if the underlying feature, the, the solid, was to change in size, the edge which has been burned onto this sketch would then move with it. 
So the dimension would change, and that's how adaptivity all works. Adaptivity doesn't work without uh, without project geometry. And project geometry as well does or can happen automatically. I'll just undo out of this. If you go into your application options, and then on the sketch tab, there is an option to automatically project edges when you create a sketch or edit a sketch. If you give that a tick, every time you sketch on a face, Inventor will automatically project those edges through. Because for a lot of people, it's one of the first things they do is project the edges of the sketch, of, of the face that they're sketching on. So that's a useful ticky box to put on. It can result in a lot of unused lines on sketches. And it, de it does depend on like how complex the face is that you're sketching on as to what kind of projection you end up with. It's not bad, you know, having loads of unused reference edges isn't the end of the world. As long as you don't, you don't have hundreds of sketches in your model, it's not going to be. It's not going to have anything you know, negative effects or anything like that. So, that's what project geometry is. That's the standard, the most common one you'll use, and that's project geometry. Right. We've also got project cut edges. Mm, what does cut edges mean? It's it, it could be better. The definition of this could be better. If I'm honest, they haven't done a great job of this one. But once you once you see what it does, it makes sense and it is actually really useful. So what I'm going to do is hover a work plane uh, off of the origin plane, maybe to about there. Let's call that 105 and then call it a day around there. And then we'll sketch on that work plane. So what I'm doing here, right, is I'm sketching through a free form. So at no point on this sketch are there any flat faces. So if I do a project geometry, right, there's no edges here. If I do an F7, although it looks like I've got a solid edge running around here, there isn't one. I'm sketching through curved faces, so I can't actually project these edges here. But if you need to grab this edge that's running around here, what you would do is project the cut edges. You're projecting the edges that your sketch is cutting through. And that's where they get this terminology from. So project cut edges, and then you end up with that. And then what you can do from there is same again. You can draw a circle, dimension from those edges, or you can use that as, for example, like a, an offset, something like that. Finish that sketch, and then you know, you've got this new extrusion profile there, which you can use as whatever you want. It could be a regular old extrusion, or it could be a cut, something like that. So that's what project Cut edges is made. And the next one, it requires a sheet metal. Uh, we can't do it in this model, so we'll have to jump into a sheet metal model because uh, it's a project flat pattern. So I'll just do this as, as basic as possible because it doesn't require anything of any uh, complex stature. So 50 by 50, we'll face this out and then we'll put a couple of flanges on here. <laughs> and then that'll give us something that can be flat patterned out. There we go. And then I'll sketch on that face there. Right. So dropping down project geometry, you've got the option to project flat pattern. What this lets you do, mate, is pick a face and then it will project onto this sketch the, the, the profile of that flange as if it was flat patterned out. So what you do is you give the face a click and then boom, projects the face onto the sketch as if it was flat patterned. Could do the same thing again give that one a click and there you go that profile there that projected edge represents this flange if it was flat patterned out uh, and that can be you know you can use that profile there to create features which would exist once this part was flat patterned out it just gives you a representation of where the features would be if they were flat patterned and that can be useful in a host of circumstances. Right, the other one that we've got is Projector 3D Sketch. This one, I've not actually used it before, but when I started looking at this, I was like, actually, yeah, it's it's one of those ones where you wouldn't, there's no circumstance where you'd always use it, but it's good to know it's there to call on it and have it in the bank, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to float a work plane off of here. Right, let's go 150 and call that one a day, and then we'll sketch on it here. And we'll do, oh, we'll just keep it simple with circles, mate. We don't want to get this too complicated. So we'll do a circle and then right click and OK. OK, right. Project geometry, drop that down. Project a, 2D, a project a 3D sketch. Once you give that a click, it automatically picks up the sketch geometry. 
and then you select the face that you want to project to and you can see here it's taken that sketch geometry and it's projecting it onto that curved face that I've just selected. When you click OK, it's going to create a 3D sketch underneath your 2D sketch. And it does that once you click Finish Sketch. It doesn't do it until you actually exit the sketch. Uh, but there it is. There's a 3D sketch which comprises of uh, your circle here, which has been projected out and then onto that face. So it's, it's like, uh, you know... You, you, you can do this in other ways. There's other ways of achieving that, but it's just a good one to have in the bank if you ever do need to, to create uh, 3D sketches of entities projected onto faces. Uh, it's, just a, yeah, it's, just, it's just another nice little modern tool to have uh, in your arsenal. And then finally, the last type of project geometry is the project DWG underlay. Underlay, underlay, riba, riba, riba. I couldn't help myself. Uh, it's not something I've used before, but I'm not going to say, oh, nobody uses it because there'll be tons of people that'll find this useful, depending on what industry you're in uh, and what your, your, what your workflows are. But this allows you, or the DWG underlay allows you to bring in an entire AutoCAD drawing and use it as like a blueprint in a way for an AutoCAD or for, for an Inventor model. So what you would do is you go to Manage in, in Inventor Parts. I've started a brand new empty Inventor Parts just to keep it simple. Then go to Manage and then just import, just regularly rolled import. Browse to an AutoCAD drawing, right? Just any old AutoCAD drawing. Uh, pick where you want to bring it in. Uh, pick an origin point. And then boom, it'll bring in the AutoCAD underlay. Uh, and then start creating a model. So... I don't know. I mean, I don't want it to be uh, exactly. Let's uh, float a work plane a tiny bit off. Uh, Christ, this is a big draw. There's like, oh, I need to make sure that what I'm drawing is going to be big enough. So let's extrude that kind of there. And then we'll sketch on the face of him. Right. So, yeah. So I've got 3D model sketch on that face and then i've got a dwg imported underlay here so what you would do is you would go to project dwg geometry and then you can now pick entities from the dwg onto your inventor faces just like that Yay. um obviously with an ordnance survey map not so useful uh, <laughs> you probably import existing details from AutoCAD drawings that somebody's drafted years ago, you might want to be you might want to convert them into 3D. You know, convert old AutoCAD drawings into 3D. So this is a way of bringing them into Inventor and then just sort of projecting them and then uh, and convert them into 3D. That's probably probably easier ways of doing that. But ah, for whatever reason you might have, this is a way of bringing the DWG data in and then um, and, and then projecting it, reusing the lines and entities. So those are all your options, mate. Those are all the project options. That's uh, the full array of projections that we've got. So yeah, uh, not all of the not all of the examples that I've given covers all of the use cases. It's a tool set that can be used almost in infinite circumstances. So give it a play, mate. Have a have a have a play. It's just one of those things where once you've understood what they are, you kind of call on them as and when you need them. So there you go, mate. Thanks very much again for being members of the channel. Much appreciated. And I'll see you all in the next one.